this week's show, we'll talk about Irwindale. It might be closing down. We'll discuss the announcements made by Mazda at the Canadian Motorsports Expo. And then we'll finish the show up with Rally Sweden. Welcome to the Insider Report. Welcome to this episode of the Insider's Report. I'm your host, Errol Tucker. And joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood, and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keen. How are you doing, gentlemen? Excellent. Wonderful. Wasn't too sunny in some parts of California, Southern California today. Had some right. rain. Had some rain in the, you can see it in the distance. But wherever I am, there's constant sun and puffy <laughs> clouds. That sounds good. Well, I think... Th I think the clouds over uh, Los Angeles, California area is due since we heard some really bad news today uh, that's starting the beginning of the week here where um, it looks like Irwindale may be no more. Yeah, it's a, in, in fact, now that you mention it, the clouds that I did see were to the east uh, over what would be Irwindale Speedway. It's a pretty bad thing. We can joke about it, but they sent out a, it's been rumored for a long while, and I talked to the track PR guy over the weekend, but it came mm -hmm. out on Monday that the track one sentence thing that said there will be no racing in 2012. They've canceled the 2012 season. Now, the rumors. Now, now, what does this do to? Yeah, what, what are the rumors? What are you hearing? The rumors are all over the map. Everything from uh, malfeasance in the front office to uh, a dispute between the property owner. It's a long term lease where the track was built. Uh, a dispute between the property owner who owns the land and the people who built and operate the track itself. I kind of think that that might be uh, at the hub of this thing. Got to understand that Irwindale could exist without the weekly racing programs that go on there. Uh, some of the uh, commercials you see on television are shot at Irwindale. If you ever saw the track, and the grandstand, you'd recognize it. Maybe the one thing that you would recognize immediately was the Kia commercial that was shot for the Super Bowl. Uh, all of the Toyota Speedway and the Irwindale Speedway branding was CGI'd off the uh, off the walls, but the, that white Toyota or the white Kia that was going around the track with the girls in the bathing suits. I'm sure you remember that, Peter. Oh, definitely. That, that was, was shot at Irwindale. <laughs> yeah. That was shot at Irwindale Speedway. So it could exist with uh, the, the events that rent the track, like Formula Drift. Uh, Irwindale right. is the house of drift. And uh, uh, studios that uh, run the thing, they, that, that, that rent it. The Kia commercial took, for example, three days to shoot. So it stays pretty busy even without the Saturday night. Then they have a Thursday night uh, street racing drag strip, an eighth-mile drag strip. That seems to be uh, fairly low overhead, and that seems to work. But you're going to have to do some thinking of what, the, what happens next at Irwindale Speedway. Yeah, I would think that, you know, they're being in, in the heart of movie land, that they probably do have some opportunities to, to still rent that track. And hopefully it won't go away. And this is just a hiccup. Um, it also seems that they may have lost some major sponsorship uh, last year as well. Yeah, the Toyota Speedway, Toyota bought the naming rights for the track. And uh, they had a 10-year deal uh, with a five-year out. This was the fifth year. Last November, they let them know that they weren't going to continue, which is curious. Uh, Toyota Corporate in Japan has announced a billion-dollar profit for this year. Most of that, obviously, was when they got out of F1. But uh, <laughs> for some reason, they decided not to go forward with the thing. I think part of the issue, and I had a hard time doing this, uh, people still call it Irwindale Speedway right. instead of Toyota Speedway. Speedway at Irwindale, uh, much like right. Laguna Seca and Mazda. Mazda wants exactly. you to call it Mazda Raceway at Laguna Seca. So, uh, you know, the, the biggest issue for me, though, is that on Saturday nights, I'm only about 20 minutes from the track, and that's where I used to go every Saturday night to get a baked potato and a large Dr. Pepper. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do for dinner on Saturday nights now. Was, hey, Bill, was that a NASCAR-affiliated track or some other sanctioning body? No, NASCAR. It was very much a NASCAR affiliated track. Uh, and they had uh, NASCAR uh, events. They had some ASA events that would go up there, ASA trucks. Uh, they would have a Turkey Night Grand Prix uh, that USAC would uh, sanction the midgets and sprint cars. So there was a, there's a lot of, of uh, events that would come in and right. use the track. 
but and it's it's widely considered. Darrell Waltrip calls it the best half mile short track facility in the country. And by, I've been to a lot of them, and by and large, Irwindale is one of it's the uh, the Taj Mahal of short track Saturday night racing. Oh, so yeah. when as that, well as, you know you have to you have to say it's, yeah. With that being where it's located, you know, it's right there outside of Los Angeles. Uh, so you're, you're near a tremendously large metropolitan area. And a huge amount of, of fans. I mean, that's, but if Fontana can't draw the fans, uh, you know, within uh, what NASCAR and Fontana, within what, four hours of the racetrack, right. you get one in 10 Americans like 30 million people that are within and they can't get 200,000 seats sold in two events. So right. it's not an easy thing to do. You've got to understand that there's a lot of things to do in Southern California from driving past all of those right. facilities to go to Las Vegas, going to the beach, going to the mountains. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things you could do in Southern California. Personally, I think they sold the track as a racing facility instead of an inexpensive thing to do on a Saturday night, uh, a date night. Uh, you know, it only costs twenty dollars to get in, right. and you got uh, racing from like six in the evening till uh, ten o'clock at night. So, well, Phil, I'm gonna have to call you out. You know, you're always down on NASCAR, but now I find out you've been having your your dietary supplement <laughs> on Saturday night watching a short track. I don't know how much you, yeah. how you can get away with that. Well, you know, that's <laughs> where else can I go to get a baked potato? Well, I guess you got me there. <laughs> well, hopefully they'll uh, hopefully they'll just uh, kind of restructure, and uh, as you know, as you said, uh, there are other things that go on there. Hopefully that'll kind of keep the doors open, um, and they'll kind of restructure and bring back a schedule, if not later this year, you know, for the uh, 2013 season. So we'll look out for that. We're going to take a quick break, gentlemen, and then when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what we heard from uh, north of the border over this weekend. We'll be right back. Hey, Mario. Hey, what do you got in this thing? Uh, 16 valve, 2.4 liter engine, 200 horsepower. Uh, air conditioning. 32 valve, 3.5 liter engine, 650 horsepower, air conditioning. Honda builds every IndyCar engine. It's our commitment to racing and engineering. The same engineering that goes into the all-new Civic, the official vehicle of the IZOD IndyCar series. Welcome back to the Insiders. So this weekend was the Canadian Motorsports Expo in Toronto, Canada. Uh, it is uh, basically Toronto's version of our PRI or IMIS show. Uh, it's their big, big uh, racing trade show. And that happened uh, right at the airport, right outside of uh, Toronto. Uh, Mazda North America made a, a big announcement where they are jumping in with both feet and uh, supporting and brought out some contingency programs for Mazda Racing up there. They uh, have a contingency program for the Canadian Touring Car uh, Championship uh, for drivers who are driving Mazdas. Uh, they also have a B-Spec um, contingency program and then they also announced a Spec Miata contingency program and for you know us uh, Spec Miata drivers in the Northeast that's fantastic uh, you know I'm quite sure several drivers are going to think about jumping over uh, north of the border and participating in some Spec Miata driving up there right well I gotta I gotta tell you you know I mean it's great news that Mazda announced that but you know when I was at the 24 hours of Daytona a couple weeks ago I saw John Bondar there the president of Canadian touring car um, and he said it was mm -hmm. the first time he'd ever been to Daytona so I mean, he's out beating the bushes. He wants B-Spec to go, and he's really, you know, working with Continental, and, you know, they know they have a B-Spec tire, and um, he's he's really making a big go for the B-Spec, so that's good that Mazda's hopped on board with them up there. Um, yeah, I have to say that, you know, the B-Spec program up there is pretty impressive. They drive at some, uh, some fantastic tracks. Right. Uh, you know, they're going to be there uh, during the Formula One weekend, 
uh, in Montreal. You know, you can't uh, you can't beat no. that out there with all those thousands of fans in, in a in a B spec car. That's going to be. And good. then I have another another buddy, um, Derek Luger, that lives in Nova Scotia. And they have a little private track, and they get like eighty or a hundred guys come out for a regular regional weekend. They use the SECA rule set, but you know, it's just kind of a little small track up there, and. He said that Spec Miata was really taken off. That um, there there was zero Spec Miatas before last year. Now I think they're up to six to eight from last year, and then a bunch more guys are building them. So Spec Miata, Spec Miata wow. has kind of taken off in in Canada. So that was two things I learned at the twenty four hours of Daytona. Anyway, the other thing is that they're actually going to let uh, you know those classes and those cars in Canada be part of the Mazda Shootout for uh, 2012. So, you know, you win a championship in Canadian touring car, uh, in, in, a, in a touring car Mazda, or in B-Spec, or in Spec Miata up there, and now you're going to have three champions uh, up in that region that have the possibility of basically coming down and competing in the uh, Mazda shootout. And, you know, I was a judge uh, of that event uh, this year, uh, just passed, and uh, that, that's a, a fantastic opportunity for the right that driver. That is excellent. Yeah, there's a that we keep hearing B spec. The factories, the manufacturers, the OEMs are pushing the heck out of that. That gives you an idea of where they want to spend their money. Uh, people that want to go after Camaro and and uh, Mustang and Challenger money should really reconsider and and look at things like B spec and and uh, Continental Tire Street Tuner stuff. That's where the manufacturers are putting a lot of and, interest. And you're right, Bill. I mean, before, you know, we did that one B-Spec test up in Michigan, and then we didn't think we were going to do another B-Spec test to balance, you know, for SECA. And, you know, SECA didn't want to put any more money into it because they, you know, they sent a couple of guys to the, the first test. But now the manufacturers have got together, and there will be another B-Spec test somewhere on the East Coast within the next month. So, um, so, so what spurred that on, Peter? Well, there's just some, the fact that they there feel was, they need to well, have another there were test. some manufacturers that didn't make the test, and and I think they thought they were being cagey by not going to the test. They thought they'd get you know a, maybe a better deal, and now they don't like their weight right. restrictor. So now all of a sudden they kind of want to have a test to you know prove to them, prove to SCCA that you know the balance is that SCCA is wrong and they're right. So and that's fine. I mean that's that's so that's the, good. You know they didn't get, they didn't have the opportunity to participate in the first test. And so now they all want to have right. a second test, and especially now that Grand Am's. Now, will this test? Let me let me ask you now. Will this test affect anything that's going on in Grand Am World Challenge, or, or maybe yeah, even Canadian Touring Car, is, is in reference to balancing? It's, it's all of them. Uh, SCCA Club holds the rule set for B Spec, so okay. so that's why that they you know they everybody because the manufacturers everybody's going to follow the SCCA Club rule set. And so, I mean, Grand Am's on board, World Challenge on board. Each of them are going to have their own little supplements. You know, there's going to be a tire rule for them. You're not going to stop that. You know, right? Um, right. Really, the Canadian Touring Car Series. I think they're just pretty much taking our rule set and going with it. And you know, with the addition, they wanted me to help them class. You know, a Hyundai that we don't have down here. But other than that, they're you know they're all in. So. Um, let, right. let me let me add to that, Peter. Uh, and Errol, when I tried to bring up the idea of a Ford Mustang Camaro, uh, Chevrolet Camaro battle in two wheel drive in Rallycross a couple of years ago, I was literally shouted down by people who represent manufacturers pretty high up. And they said, no, that's not what we wanted to do. That's not what we want to use this for. We want to demonstrate two-wheel drive performance. And the, it should be noted that the Mazda B-Spec car that they presented to start all this ball rolling, they entered into the uh, Rallycross at Irwindale, speaking of Irwindale, uh, last year. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the car crashed and they took it home. But uh, that's where their attention is and, right and now. And I agree with you. Um, gotcha, gotcha. 
One, one thing before we go to break, I just wanted to bring up, uh, because we're going to come back uh, after the break and talk a little bit about Rally Sweden. It just happened. That was a big event. But I just wanted to kind of jump in and throw in the fact that some news out of NASA, which I wanted to get you guys' opinion on, that uh, basically NASA looks like uh, they are going to produce their own online magazine. Now, most people know that uh, Grassroots Motorsports has been the uh, official or uh, pretty much the official magazine of NASA uh, pretty much for the past five years. And there was a, a particular insert that would always have NASA content in there. It looks like NASA has decided to break its ties with Grassroots Motorsports and come out with their own online version uh, of a magazine, um, Speed News. Um, good. Is this a good move or a bad move, Peter? <laughs> Well, I, I don't want to be biased in this at all. Be, being the NASA, being the NASA club lover that no, you are, uh, you hey, got to ask hey, me first. Uh, you know, I guess I would have liked to have been a fly on the wall when that negotiation was going on between grassroots and NASA. I mean, uh, obviously, you know, maybe NASA's grown to the fact that they need their own publication. They want to be in control. That's not a bad thing. Right. I don't have any, you know, problems with right. that. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, you have Sports Car Magazine for SCCA, so you and know, it's all, you know, honestly, I, well. I don't know that SCCA should have a sports car. I know it's its own entity now. It stands alone. You know, it's kind of its own entity. SCCA really doesn't have anything mm -hmm. to do with it, um, the managing of it, but anymore. But I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, if if your if your message isn't getting out the way you wanted it to, then yeah, I guess you you know go do your own. So, and if it's electronically, I mean, honestly, in in, in all these in our regions, all have that problem trying to produce even you know like our local. Central Florida region thing is called a checker. I mean, that's a huge number in the budget just to do a regular black and white, you know, pamphlet once a month. So I know our region's gone yeah, down print, to printing. Printing costs are expensive. That? But but let me ask you. I said printing costs right. are definitely expensive. You're right. So that that's a big dollar figure in anybody's budget. But Bill, you know, the fact is is that Grassroots Motorsports had a wide distribution. Now. Uh, NASA is producing an online magazine that only their their members are going to get. Is this going to really help serve the purpose of getting the word of NASA out? I think it just serves more purpose than hoping that grassroots uh, spends time with them. If you're spending ten dollars to uh, have grassroots tell your story, uh, you do much better to spend seven fifty uh, to tell your own story to whoever will listen. Uh, so right. I think more people will get a chance to hear the NASA story. And I've seen the, the, the pilot uh, publication. It was excellent. A lot of good photography. They embedded video in it, stuff you're not going to get in a, a, a month old magazine uh, sitting on a newsstand. So I think it's a, a brilliant a idea. The, did you take a look at the, the last page of, of the magazine, by the way? Well, I, there was something there that didn't make <laughs> I didn't quite gather what it was, but uh, that looked pretty good, too. It, something about Go Racing TV, I, you know, something there. Now, now, but that looked pretty well, good, that, too. Now we know why you're plugging it. So, 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 so with that, I mean, I have to say that I've had my feelings and, you know, sometimes I feel like, you know, maybe they should have stayed in grassroots motorsports. Uh, this is definitely a good move. I think even from a business standpoint, like you said, if they're spending $10 to put, to get the, the word out in grassroots motorsports, and now it's cost them seven fifty to do it on their own. And then on the back end, they're also going to have the opportunity of making money by selling ads. Uh, then, you know, I guess from well, that standpoint, it's, I mean, you know, a money making ha Grassroots is going to have to give them some coverage. They're going to they're gonna have a magazine called Grassroots without covering NASA? I mean, come on. Exactly. Exactly, Peter. That's, that's the whole point of the thing. I know the guy who is publishing the magazine. He's got enormous experience at, at uh, uh, publishing magazines. And if they could get that magazine done for seven fifty, they can mail it for free through email. Right. So uh, right. they they don't have to send it just to uh, uh, advert just to members. They can send it to whoever they want that doesn't think it's spam, and uh, they'll get to more people that way. Exactly, exactly. All right, gentlemen, we went real long on this segment. Uh, we're going to have to jump to a commercial, and then when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about Rally Sweden. We'll be right back.
club and amateur racer. Here at Go Racing TV, we salute you. And we want to give you all the tools and info to compete with the best. Find out how to do it all from your own garage by watching our club racer and autocrosser shows. GoRacingTV.com, supplying all your video racing needs. Welcome back to the Insiders. So, uh, you know, Rally Sweden was uh, went on this weekend, and uh, Bill, you know, you you uh, mentioned earlier that uh, global warming had an effect on this one. Well, to to be politically correct, it's climate change, but yes, uh, it did have a bearing. It was a very mild uh, temperatures, apparently a mild winter in Sweden, and uh, some of the ice that they expected to be there was thinner than normal. The studded tires were able to cut through the ice, and uh, some of the cars that followed the lead car on the road, uh, they had gravel, and that was very rare for a studded tire, soft snow tires, and uh, that gravel was eating up the tires spitting out the tires were spitting out the studs and uh, a lot of teams especially citroen had uh, tire troubles that kept miko hervinen from chasing down uh, yari Mati latvila and uh, yari body won the event four out of five of the top four of the top five cars were fords and uh, i think this was the sixth time that fords won the event Wow, wow. So were they able to uh, figure out what was going on on the early stages and make adjustments uh, for the later stages? Uh, no, I mean, it, it, gravel, and in some cases, rocks. There was one video that I posted uh, where uh, and, and Sebastian Loeb tried to cut a turn. He spun into a snowbank on uh, the first day, lost a couple of minutes while the people pushed him out. He was making up time. He tried to cut uh, one corner and hit a rock, a rock so hard, he wondered how the suspension stayed in the car. So, wow. uh, yes, there was there was, there were some real problems. And uh, for some reason, it hit the Citroens a little harder than the Fords. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, all right, gentlemen. We're gonna uh, we're gonna have to cut this one short. We uh, have gone a little bit over our allotted time. Uh, Peter, any last uh, parting thoughts? Yeah, only I only got two small things. First of all, you know, I, I know you I know you went uh, <laughs> out there four wheeling this weekend. Yeah, I wasn't even gonna talk about it. I know it's weeks away, but you know, <laughs> I just got to call out to the Spirit of Daytona boys. You know, we ran eighth in the twenty four hours of Daytona, and I got to tell you. The closer you get to winning that sucker, the worse it feels when you have a problem. We burned up a inner CV jury at 3.30 in the morning and lost 12 laps and never could get it back. But um, right. I want to make a call out to them. That was a great run. It was flawless. You know, that's just one of those things that happens. Um, the boys on the crew, nobody gives them credit, but they did 30, th 30 tire changes in 24 hours and all were under 22 seconds. So last wow. year we were lucky if we could do it in 25. But hmm. so we got some of the best kids on pit lane, that's for sure. Um, the other, the second item is it's Chip Chip Van Versus 45th birthday on Saturday. So happy birthday to that pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Bill, any last thoughts? Uh, no, the Sebring 12 hours coming up in, uh, what, the middle of March, a month away. And mm -hmm. uh, talked to some guys who are from Audi, Tom Christensen, Alan McNish, who are going to be there, Sasha Mawson, the new Porsche that they're driving looks better than some of the custom Porsches at SEMA. Uh, it's it's going to be a spectacular event, the first in the World Endurance Championship, uh, a world championship that's starting this year. Sounds good. Hopefully, uh, we'll be down there. Um, another uh, announcement to make is basically uh, something that we announced earlier this week, that now Go Racing TV has the Scottish Mini Cup uh, you know, we added last week the uh, UK Ford Fiesta series. So uh, that uh, trip over to the Autosport show has uh, become fruitful. And we're getting more and more series from the UK and Scotland that are going to be uh, on Go Racing TV. So continue oh, to look I, out for I that. I guess I should say one more thing, Tucker. You know, this 
you know, this weekend's the Strider Speed Week. I know you and Bill won't be watching, but there's a lot of Americans that will. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. It is. It is uh, the uh, the big racing event of the year. So you know, beginning into that. So great, great. All right, folks. Remember, you can always tune in to Go Racing TV for all your video club racing needs. Until next time, you take care. Yeah.